and we are live sitting in the hotel room waiting for our flight tomorrow we had to do a bunch of uh changes <laughs> got rick over here not even gonna show you the bad hotel room we were looking for a place cheap otherwise we wouldn't have been able to get showered up and everything from that nasty match but um anyway uh we got, <laughs> we got guns and gear and having to watch the car but just wanted to see uh if anybody had any questions about the hornady the 2020 the PRC event that we just did and basically get your thoughts on anything. What's up, Chris Smith? How are you doing, sir? Starting to get some people in here. I have five in here. Thanks for the thumbs up. When you get to 50, I'll start talking. All right. We got nine here, 15. <laughs> no, 50. All right. So I'm hoping that the audio is good and we have good service. It's probably better service than we have at the house. Uh, we are in Salt Lake City, Utah. Or, uh, Utah. What's up, SBR and Mike D? You could have a dead rabbit in a treadmill. Uh, I know it's. Uh, I know it's. I know it's rather late where you guys are back at home. What's up, conservative sniper hunter? Yeah, it was a tough match. Okay, so we'll go ahead and start from the beginning. So, you know, we got buy-ins from Santan and CMC Triggers. Big shout out to those guys, and. We didn't know what to expect going into this event. Tried to get everything, you know, prepped up. Yeah, it is a long video. I appreciate you guys watching the other one. What's up, David Ashley? So the first day was rather grueling. Um, the video that I put out doesn't really do it justice. Uh, it was just very windy, and it was a lot of stages. So regardless of what type of competition you've done, if you haven't done any PRS style event or anything on this scale, you got to remember there were 182 shooters at this event. Um, it has been heralded as one of the hardest PRS events in the country, and I can I can believe it. <laughs> there you go, buddy. Do you really want to show the picture of the room like that? I can give two shits. Less. It's too far away. We'll be able to read the comments. You can read them on mine. Uh, DW, I did make, I did make the hit with the second round but you're only allowed to go two rounds with it it was a very very tough target because the way it was in the valley i had already dialed in seven tenths so that's something that's new to me you typically don't dial you're typically going to hold your wind but i had a couple of pro guys on my squad and they were telling me that if you already know which way it's favoring and basically they look at a target and they look and say that's a six tenths mil target they look at the wind and then they'll say, well, go ahead and dial in this much. Now, it was really cool working with those guys because they had a lot of information. There was a lot that I learned from the event. One, make sure you have the right gear. Oh, Chris Smith, you going to do more PRS, Ray? I'm not sure. I had a really good time. You got hooked. And I was really happy with the finish. Um, beating out a lot of seasoned shooters, a lot of seasoned shooters, coming in. I think the actual number was I came in 96 out of 185. What's up, Seth? How are you doing, sir? We'll get those items to you here soon. Just waiting on some transfers to come in. Here you go, buddy. <clears throat> all right, so, all right, we got Rick over here. Rick over here. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Rick over here is playing with a freaking tripod <laughs> so that I can read these comments. Hold on, I had a delay. Let's go up a little bit. What the hell? Oh, let me tell you, we are in a trashy hotel room in uh, in Utah right now. <laughs> Rick's over there hitting the button. What was your rifle set up? What's up, Burke? Um, I was running the Accuracy International. I was shooting six millimeter Creedmoor, which is a very popular cartridge there. Not so much as much as like six XC, six BR, uh, six Dasher, some twenty two Creedmoor. So I was shooting six millimeter Creedmoor with 115 grain DTAX, and I was running at 30, 50 feet per second with a Night Force ATAC R7 to 35. Now, one of the cool things about it, and I've, hold on. What's up, Ramsey Country? What's up, oh, Ramsey? I'm trying, trying to get this caught up. His his phone's not getting caught up, so hopefully it's still transmitting here. It is working. I just saw Ramsey's right, right. comment. All right. Andrew's trashy there. compared to what? I don't know. It's pretty trashy. I mean, we've got freaking meth heads outside, <laughs> and uh, yeah. Ray wanted to go cheap. Guess what? We went cheap. Well, what we wanted to do was get really close to the airport because we're flying out really early in the morning, 
We were originally supposed to fly to Denver, but after shooting all day long, yeah, 3050 is, is pretty good. Like I said, they capped it at 3,200 feet per second. Yeah, there were there were quite a few guys shooting, Chris, uh, the 22 Creedmoor. I think you might know about that, but uh, you know, that thing's got a short barrel life, it really does. Yeah, we have targets outside. We have one rifle set up here, and you know, we're always well armed. Y'all think the six Creed will stick around for a while, or is it just a flash in the pan? Hopefully, because I just ordered a barrel. Uh, no, I like the six Creed more. I really do. It, yeah, this was paid by the hour. <laughs> Oh, no. Now, the whole thing is it kept us from having to drive almost seven hours to get to Denver and fly to Denver because we were only an hour and a half away from Woodruff. So we got something right here so we could get a shower and everything else instead of hopping on the plane with all of that moon dust on. 22 Creedmoor will be right at 3,200 feet per second. Yeah, I can actually push mine a little faster, but I really don't want to. Uh, I think it's good enough for now. Yeah, the sheets are clean. We checked the room and everything. It looks like the door has been kicked in about 15 times. 15, at least 15 times. Yeah, it's this is that's okay. You know what? It's all good. Do crackheads spin like a Texas star asking for myself? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We can go outside and see plenty. Yeah, yeah we might have to. What's up, Todd Schmidt? What's up, Todd? So, yeah, your video froze. But Okay, so the entire match, the... That froze? Yeah, can, I guess they can hear me. For the entire match, the highest magnification I ever used on the entire match was 13 power or thereabouts. I never zoomed in any more than that. Uh, it was very easy for me to find the targets very quick. And, you know, that's something that I can't stress enough is too many people overpower. We had a couple of people on our squad that uh, were new and they were just... You know, you look down and they were on 20 power and they couldn't find targets, couldn't figure out why. Um, the targets were, some of them were difficult to find anyways. Yeah. Um, you know, I tried my best to get you guys some good footage. Uh, basically, I took one of those little bendy tripods and just stuck it on the tent anytime I could just to get you guys some because the, the GoPro and all that other stuff wasn't going to work. Mirage was not a problem out here. Um, a lot less mirage than what I'm used to. I will tell you, it was great not to have a suppressor. Okay, <laughs> you don't see many suppressors uh, at this two. event. Hey, yeah, Rick said he saw two. Yeah. I think I saw two or three, but I think those might have been the Area 419 guys that were, you know, pushing their Maverick. Uh, you don't want any. What's up, Hell, Jeff? LZ USA. This is for you, Rick. Do you have any? Did you have any problems with moon dust? Did your mags function? They no, it was horrible. Yes, today was another day of fighting those mags, and we 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 cleaned the rifles last night, and we uh, cleaned the mags, or attempted our best, <laughs> and no. So yeah, so if you've never taken apart a Tika magazine, uh, that was a new one on me. Oh, you know, we battled that thing that. for a little bit, but I've never had issues like that ever. And uh, day one was right there. And it's not like you're dropping mags in the dirt and all that kind of stuff, because you're really not. Usually everything's, there's a few 12 round stages and a couple other ones, but for the most you're shooting eights and nines and 10 round shots, so you're not dropping mags and changing too much. Too yeah, often. most of the speeds, unless it was first thing this morning, most of the wind speeds average anywhere from seven to 25 miles an hour, but it was really howling um, in the yeah, valleys. Like the, I did. I, I learned a, a ton of stuff. I actually took a, a ton of notes. So after every stage, or so they give you matchbooks like this. Yeah. So you kind of, kind of see, but it just goes through the stages, and then you write your dope down, and you can see all these notes here. I guess you can. Basically, you see a lot of writing on here because there's a lot of stuff that I was like, okay, I need to write this down, something to remember for next time. Uh, Burke, no, the uh, match was actually in Woodruff, Utah. It was the Hornady 2020 PRC. And I talked to guy. this is the second year, they said this was the hardest match they've ever shot. And they said that the targets were smaller than last year's event because it was an Armageddon uh, gear cup qualifier. Um, first place won like $3,800 and a custom rifle. Second yeah, place won that. Right. Yeah, so I mean there were there were a ton of prizes. Unbelievable prize table. Would dust caps for the mags help? 
I don't know. No. no, everything had dust on it. Guys, um, if you're not running the cover, you got the cover close by. I think so. So if you're going to get into PRS, guys, uh, especially if it's going to be out west where they have this, you're going to want a cover like this. Rick actually pulled this off the prize table as well. Yeah. Along with a couple other things. So but this is waterproof and dustproof. So basically, uh, Century. Yeah, Century. But it covers your whole action and everything. If you don't have one of these, you're going to Jackson. You're going to deal with problems that I had all day long. So, you know, if you're going out there with pristine equipment, that's pretty cool, stretchy. You better be ready for it to be hard use equipment. That's one thing I'll say about the AI is it didn't fail. Um, the one thing I will tell you about those magazines, the new AI magazines, the ones that are double stacked, uh, if you put it loose in the pocket, some rounds can pop out. So, on one stage, actually the rock stage that I just posted uh, about 15 minutes ago, I only had eight rounds in that mag because two of them came loose in my pocket. So Seven condoms, yeah. You, it's it's a must have. <laughs> and we didn't have anything. I was trying to run a, a terry cloth looking thing over the top of the, uh, basically the bolt in the action. Yeah, guys, what I ended up doing is I have a rain cover for my Everly stock. I use that around the scope and the action because this match required you to keep a chamber safety uh, a safety chamber indicator in, at all times so when people are walking by it's just kicking that dust into the action and the actions just get gritty they recommend not using any oil whatsoever no you gotta run it dry you gotta run it dry or just put just a dab of grease on the back of the lugs you might have to put a power cord into that uh, is it good juice pack. yeah and that's how oh, ramsey country said that's what he calls them or uh gun condoms gun it's definitely a must need. So, as far as the event itself, I had a really good. Oh, geez. Hi. <laughs> hold on. Just leave it to Rick. Hey, hold hold on. On. I'm doing all this for you, my friend. You big pain in the booty. It's this whole glass thing you got on here now. It doesn't work. X raying on the moving targets. Were you shooting in front of the target, walking the bullet in? Were you following the target for. I uh, know what I was doing is I was basically doing an intercept on it. So if you haven't watched the video, there was actually a moving target. At all, it was almost 400 yards. Hold on. Two. And two, yeah, wait, no, 365. Yeah, 363. Because it was an angled mover. It wasn't completely mm -hmm. perpendicular to your shooting position. And what they did not tell you the speed. So basically, you had to determine the speed, figure out your lead. And so. If this is my cross, let's let's just pretend my my finger. No, this bottle cap is the actual crosshair. So you've got your you know one mil, two mil, three mil. Well, if the target, let's say the target's moving this way, okay. As it's moving, when it gets to whatever you had figured your lead would be. So in this case, I they said some guys were saying it was two point something miles an hour. I had it right at three miles per hour. So basically, when it came in at the one, because of my bullet speed, and you can do this on Kestrel, you can also do it on a street lock. When it came in to my one mil marker, I would pull the trigger and the, the bullet is basically gonna hit the target. It was a double-headed coyote. Yeah, was, and what it, it would do is you were not allowed to shoot it when it changed positions. You had orange markers, and so when this thing moved, you could engage in between the orange marker, could not engage. And then it would change positions and go back the other way. So that's how the mover worked. I played a lot with movers, so that was actually fun. I enjoyed that. Yeah, I had to hold 1.3. Even the deer wearing dust goggles. Well, you got all everybody walking, right, along the pass to the next stages. You got that. You got the people that are keeping the whole match going. You know, they're bringing water to the stages, so they're driving four-wheelers. Yeah. So some of my driving. thoughts on it. Really, really great event. This is what was different than if you guys are used to shooting three gun or competition or anything like that. Let's say you have a squad of nine guys, okay? You typically move as a squad because of resetting and everything else. You can't leave your squad. If you leave to go to the next stage, you're gonna get your butt chewed out because you didn't help with the reset for the last guy. And that's not for the last guy. Yep. PRS is not like that. What happened was, is it seemed like as soon as you got done shooting, you might stick around for one more shooter and then you left everybody and went down to the stage because other people were leaving as well. 
they're wanting to get the dope. They're really wanting to catch the tail end of the last guys that are shooting to see if they see any tricks or tips. Yep. But our squad did not stay together. And watch somebody shoot at the target so you can Yeah, and so them. if you were the last guy, maybe one guy would stick around. Stick around. <laughs> you sweat and look like a powdered donut. Yeah, I'm telling you. And I've dealt with that moon dust stuff a lot before in competitions, but because of the wind, it really, really was a, a mess out there. <laughs> What's a mess is all these zeros I got. What reloading press? Uh, oh, it's funny you should mention that. Now, I personally use RCBS. I, I don't use anything fancy or anything like that. My hand loads are good, but they did have the new Area 419 press, and that thing is gargantuan. It is. I mean, it's like the turret on the top is like this big. It's solid billet machined aluminum that's a, about an inch thick. And, and the, the whole, handle is the same size or very close to what a cue ball is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's big. It's big, yeah. And you can you can bring the shaft up and down. It look like to get the type of pressures you want. Okay, so some things that I noticed. Let me grab some things here to show you. Let me show you something. Oh, here we go. All right. So in full fairness, all right. This right here was the bag that I had purchased, and I hate to say it because those were some really good guys and they have some really good innovative products. But this was the rail changer. The problem is, I, totally I've, I struggled with this the first day. And the reason is, when you put the rail changer on here, it allows it to do this and roll. It has no stability left or right. So unless you're specifically using that on a post or like a rail, this is a horrible bag, okay? I would have been better off running this in my hand and setting it up and setting on top of it than trying to use this on an ARCA rail. An Arca rail, I will tell you, is invaluable, especially for the bipod. Yeah. Being yes. able to slide it forwards and rearwards, move stuff out of the way. Okay, so this is a great question by A. Bush. Can you tell us who the top five guys were and how their scores relate to yours? Do you, did you have those photos? Have, it's on there. Okay, so I'm going to have to turn this off for just a second. We'll still keep having this. There were 215 total targets, okay? That's how many points you could get. The first place winner was the second place guy from last year, and then Berta, Bertolini? Oh, yeah. Yeah. He got second last year. Okay, he got, he got, no, he got, he got first, second this year. Yeah, exactly. First last year. He had, the winner actually had 178 hits, okay? So that's about an 80% hit ratio. For this match there it is right there here's the top top guys okay so the top five guys make sure you don't read my name off. okay yeah. clay black letter <laughs> with 173 hits sorry 173 hits david bertaccini had 166 hits brian allen 165 and jonathan berry with 160. And then I think the last one, let's see, one, two, three, four, and then Bradley Allen had 159. I had 102 hits. So even though I placed 96 out of 192, I mean, I was happy with that finish. Um, that was that was a good That, that was finish. really good because I beat a lot of people, a lot of big names, a lot of sponsored shooters, and they were like, this is your first PRS event? And I said, yeah, I'm not new to shooting, and I've done a lot of long range shooting, but I've never done a PRS event. But back to what I was saying before, the way that the squad just kind of leaves and breaks apart, I wasn't used to that, but everything is so rushed. I mean, it's faster than anything you're going to do in 3-Gun where you're just sitting around and resetting, sitting around and resetting. Game reel, I did, I did horrible, my friend. Um, I had a lot of mag issues. I don't know if you just got here. The, uh, that killed me. I would basically, first round would always chamber and I was having problems after that second, third round. I was sitting there feeding it, kind of fingering it, trying to get it to, for the bolt. It was a it was a nightmare. Yeah, DW asked, was there any timing involved with the shoot? Yes, 90 seconds, all 20 stages. Um, that was it. And there was a lot of complaints saying that those should have been 200. They, they didn't know if they were going to be longer stages. Apparently, there's another time frame that you PRS guys use, maybe Ramsey Country can chime in, uh, but they said 90 wasn't long enough. Most people were timing out before they got all their shots off. 
Um, even for the good guys that were finishing in the top ten, yeah, they were not getting all their rounds off. There was one guy that, what was it, 26 seconds on the Night Force stage? Who won that Night Force 26 seconds? Yeah. I don't remember. On the what challenge, was, yeah. Yeah, he ended up walking out with a, uh, I don't know which model Night Force scope. Oh, it was a nice one, yeah. Yeah, really nice but one. It, their prize table was amazing. Uh, he took some video footage of it. I walked the whole thing. There was, there was certificates for all tons of stuff, guns. There was thirty. Yeah, I didn't want any guns because we're flying, There's and so they had racks of A-tip bullets, like not little where you just grab one box, but like sealed cases. sealed cases. And believe it or not, I was able to go up early enough to still get guns, uh, to still get you know the A-tips, but we're already maxed out on all of our luggage for the weight and. Um, we're already having to pay a ton to get it back. Actually, what you got was great. But That's So what I ended up getting was a Magneto Speed. Even though I had the lab radar, I ended up getting the V3, which is like a $400 uh, chronograph, but it just packs really small. There was so, a lot of those out there on zero day. Yeah, that's it. Two minutes, Ramsey Country. A lot of guys were saying these should have been two-minute stages because so many people were timing out. Guys, there were pros getting zeros on stages. The pond stage the first day, we ate did. everyone's lunch. Now, when you go up as a brand new shooter, and the squad I was in, everybody basically had the shirts on. I had cameras around me the whole time. It was I got super squatted, and uh, but when they're missing like a lot on that stage, like yeah. zero, and you're like, oh yeah, what do I got to look forward to? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's All right. Like, so if you're somebody commented on the decor here, so we essentially gave up our tickets lost our tickets flying from denver back home just so we wouldn't have to drive and stuff. actually bought new one-way tickets from salt lake into charlotte for yeah. tomorrow big shout out for rick because we were like man we got to do something and we had to have a place to say so yeah we're in this i didn't want to drive uh, he didn't want to drive i didn't want to drive six hours and, and, six and moon does close hours. yeah and just full of dirt so what were the top prizes for the top five shooters? Oh man! Oh rifles! Yeah, yeah rifles. Uh, you custom get to pick built rifles. You, want. you know, they just call your name in order of finish, and then you walk the prize table, and whatever you grab is what you take. Yeah. A. Bush said, "I saw experienced pros say that it was the hardest match they ever shot." I heard that more than you guys can possibly imagine. I I'm not trying to five. embellish it. Uh, I mean, these guys were saying that this was the most challenging match. And it was uh, a hell of a one to start off on, but I had a blast. I really did. He did good. He did solid work. Me on the other end, not so well. But Maybe a new invention: countdown clock hand inside your scope for these shoots. No, what most guys do is they have this little timer, and they actually attach it. Uh, I had a pro guy that finished in the top ten, and he had a little timer that was on the side of his rifle. And when they said engage, he just hit the button, and it was set for ninety seconds. And his would actually talk to you, and it would say, 10 seconds, 9, 8, and it would start counting it off. And so he would try to squeeze those last couple shots off. But it was pretty cool. There's a lot of gadgets. Yeah, when we fly into Charlotte, we still have a long ways to go, but it was better than getting on a plane all stinky and nasty. <laughs> uh, Rick's setup, Rick is run, was running a T3X Tico. Right there. I was a little disappointed in hearing about his mag problems because it did not get resolved. All three mags today and I cleaned them all, so. gave him feeding issues, and uh, we cleaned everything last night. The rifle ran, and then he yeah, ran. The rifle was perfect, just a stupid mag. He borrowed a primary arms platinum 6 to 35 from me so that he could shoot production division. Yep. Um, and so he took his Razor HD off because that would put him in open. There were 160 something open division guys, and that's what I shot in. Well, Ramsey right Country, it is late. I do realize that. we got to get up at 3 a.m., but at least we got a place to sleep. <laughs> if you want to call and get asleep. Uh, 116 viewers. Guys, I appreciate it. Hit that thumbs up button. That's right. Um, <clears throat> plastic mag problem? No, he's actually got metal mags. I got them right here. He can grab them because we can show those on a live chat. <coughs> Hold on for just a second. I don't know what the problem was. I tried, so every one of these has a number on it. And those are metal mags, plastic follower, so, plastic base. I don't know if you guys can see it. There's a three on that one, and then a two and a one. And I've, I've filed through these things multiple times trying to find one that would work, and none of them would work. It was very disappointing and frustrating. Um, 
because you really can't do anything. I mean, I got three mags. I only 99% of the stages only needed one to work. And A. Bush says Tika CTR mags are famous for choking in dirty conditions. Yeah, here we go. So, yeah, so, so what's the fix? <laughs> what's the fix to these ones? What mag would you recommend? Who is it? What's up, Hidden Steel? It says you have to pull the tabs out with a flathead. Yeah, we figured that out afterwards and sliding them off of the springs. But yeah, it was a little, little bit of it, it, an yeah. issue. Did you ever try to single feed, Rick? No, he did not. I wasn't with him, so like I said, I I don't know exactly. What From he did. holding to position and then fumbling around, I probably should have at least tried. <laughs> you needed ADW ninety. <laughs> yeah, ADW ninety would have fixed that. <laughs> Guys, I shoot PRS. Some, I appreciate it, Joe Robinson. Thanks for watching the channel. So what I learned, what most of the top shooters are shooting, guys, is they're shooting some type of like XLR or MDT chassis. Okay, that's what I saw a lot of. And then there's also foundation foundation chassis or something like that. There's a couple manners, but I didn't see many. Yeah, it's, it's not like you saw a lot of manners or McMillan's or anything like that. Really, really heavy Bartland barrels seem to be the choice. And I mean really heavy. Yeah, like the, barrel, the gun's 27 pounds. No one slings their rifles. Except for me. We had to do a lot of hiking, which I, I didn't mind. I'm used to that from the ruck matches. It was just different. I'm used to throwing it in a pack and everything else, but these stages are so short, it's easier just to carry the rifle. So most people just had them slung over their shoulder. Yeah. So you're not going to need a sling. You just need a backpack to have all of your, your gear in. And I'll tell you something else I learned from the pro guys. You need an ammo bag. What you need <laughs> is a group of guys that you were friends with because what they did was this. This guy was carrying mostly bags and his rifle. The other guys were carrying tripods. They were all friends. They squatted up together. But so that I'm not carrying a big pump bag. You saw me using one that I borrowed from someone. And guys, I was completely wrong about PRS guys at this match. These were the nicest folks I've ever met in my life. I mean, genuine, genuinely good people. Um, yeah, especially our first couple. Yeah, of there, there were a couple that are a little... I, I heard some comments. Rick asked one guy a question, and he kind of smarted off to him, but they said those guys are known, okay? They, they think their stuff doesn't stink, yeah. and you see you're going to have that in any You see them on TV. But for the biggest majority, man, these guys were so helpful. They were like, hey, man, you know try this or don't try that i wouldn't do that and you know if you go just you'll make friends i promise you will learn yeah. more than you possibly imagine and if you want to borrow stuff it seemed like they would let you you know what i mean it's like here try this bag if you want. yeah almost everyone was shooting a 20 plus pound rifle yep. so a, a custom chassis with like an impact precision or a curtis action or you know a defiance with a heavy bartland barrel about you know 26 28 inches some of them a little longer most everyone was shooting these little short. Yeah, I'll show you. There's a piece oh yeah, of brass we got one. Here. Yeah, it ended up in my brass. Little tiny guys. Did you throw it away? No, oh, I might have threw it away. Yeah, I did throw it away because I'm like, I don't need this. You keep. But the, uh, it was fun. It was an enjoyable time. Let me get over here in case you guys are talking. Let's see. You tell them, Ramsey Country. My rifle, well, actually, your AI was right at what, 17 or 18 pounds? Right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, and then mine was a little less, like 17 or 15. Six Dasher and the six B, uh, BRA Dominate. There's a lot, there was definitely a lot of those out there as well. It should be in that trash can right there if it's there. Uh, AI mags for the win. Yeah, you didn't have any issues with your mags, right? No, as long as I had bullets on them. As long as they had bullets in them. Yeah. He did a... Uh, let's see. What is your cheek? I don't know what you did with it. Yeah, gun people are good people. I think in every shooting event, I've, I've never had issues with any of them. Between three gun or whatever it is, it seems very friendly. People are always trying to help and uh, promote so the sport. For, for those that don't know, um, these guys are shooting these short... I mean, if you took a 6.5 Creedmoor... Or a six millimeter Creedmoor, and you shrunk it by a, a third. It's a little guy. There, it's these little guys. Okay, they're not shooting very fast either. Okay, their feet per second is going to be somewhere around twenty nine hundred feet per second. 
Uh, very few guys were over 3,000 feet per second. I couldn't find it, Rick. And that seemed to be what the, what the uh, guys that do this all the time do. Ramsey Country, yeah, a lot of guys were shooting like 105s. Uh, that was a number that came up a lot, like a 105, 105 grain bullet. How heavy will the rifle be that you are building, Rick? What is up, Robert Warren? How you doing? Dang, 138 folks on it's here. It's probably going to be about 22 pounds, 22 pounds. Uh, I, don't know yet. I didn't see anyone shooting a 7BR. Because so I'm going to put know. weight in it. Gabriel Simmons says chassis or stocks. I probably saw more chassis than I did stocks, but they were well represented on both both. Yeah, ends. there was. Yeah, quite a bit. Of, quite I've a bit heard of manners. Seventy percent of chassis. Mm, yeah, for the most part. Yeah, Everyone probably seventy percent yeah. chassis with weights. Oh yeah, there was. I picked up a guy was showing me his rifle, and I'm like, this thing. I wouldn't even want to carry this thing to each stage. Let's get a thumbs up. Yeah, let's get a thumbs up. We got Appreciate 132 it, Otter. watching. Did you see any MPA chassis? Oh, yeah, I did. Bazillion. Yeah, I did see a ton of MPA chassis. Yeah. Quite, quite a few. Those are quite MTs. popular. What there was a muzzle velocity limit, which was 3,200 feet per second, uh, plus or minus 32. They would because of elevation change and stuff like that, depending on where you loaded your ammo or how you loaded it. Um, so, if that came into question, they would chronograph you if it was called. Uh, Gabriel Simmons, the 2223 AI is ready to ship. Um, I will probably have it sometime this week. Yeah, one of the things that really surprised me about this match, and Rick had to start off on it, was oh, the God. stages that started at eight, 900 yeah, yards yeah, yeah. and went all the way out to 1,200. So He's got it right that here. That would have been... Stage six, seven. Seven. No, that was eight. 400 eight, yards. Eight, eight, eight. Yeah, look. So, you can see, maybe. Well, here's all the distances of those targets. Can they read them? Yeah, yeah. they should be able to. But basically, it's 990 is the shortest one, 1050, 1150, 1268, and then 1375 was the, the longest one. Uh, conservative Sniper Hunter, the hardest stage was going to be the pond stage. They had oh. placed the target so you could not see impacts whatsoever. And if you missed, you didn't know if you were left, right, up, or down. There were people that were intentionally shooting into the water to see what the wind was doing and to try to spot where their impact was so they could hit these targets. And they, they went away from you, but the way the wind was coming across this body of water, um, there were a ton of guys with zeros on that stage. So that was the hardest. Biggest takeaways for practice going forwards. Um, applied performance shooting. Uh, well, trying to decide if I do want to get into PRS or not. <laughs> uh, positional shooting is a, is a must. Yeah. Yeah, training, practicing wise with bags, uh, weird, weird positional shooting, where you really can't get it. You know, if you have pillows and stuff, it makes life easier. But yeah, and so uh, Juice Paul says, does anybody use Christensen carbon fiber rifles? No, that you, what you want is weight. You want the stability for PRS. Almost everyone's rifles had additional weight added to them, like with the side weights on them, on the XLR chassis as well as the. Um, the MDT chassis, really, really heavy rifles with real heavy barrels. I mean, like, heavy barrels that make the AI heavy barrel look like a kid's toy. Yeah, like a kid's Yeah, They're thick. Yeah, conservative sniper hunter, the feeding issue on day one, you remember I had that one training mag? I was able to borrow two mags from a buddy of mine that were AI mags, and somehow that mag got in the rotation. I did have some feeding issues with that mag. I retired it. I never even carried it. Um, I just left it in the bag. The other ones work great. Yeah, you don't want to carry anything you don't need. Cause... Favorite bag is absolutely going to be a game changer. No doubt about it. There were more people that were running that, like the top guys. And there's a thinner one, too. Oh, there. Yeah, it's on the bottom. There, you're right there. <laughs> You guys got to see this shit sandwich of the 
Please. So this is a game changer, and this is really heavy, okay? has a lot of weight to it, and even the best guys, okay? Pounds, you know, attaching this to the bottom of your rifle, it seems like it's good because it moves with the rifle when you place it in a different position, but almost all of the best shooters would take it, throw it, lay on top of it. This was the number one bag, and not saying specifically this one. What they do is they take these and they spray like 3M sticky spray all over it. All in here. Like crazy, so that it ju it's just crazy grippy. They got ones with grip bottoms on Yeah, them. but that's going to be the bag. Heavy, wet, oils, canvas ones. Yeah, it yeah was a lot, lot of that. It was a fun time. Question for Let's you guys. It. What would you rather do? Just go to the, a crazy, super hard, challenging, two-day uh, PRS-style match or work your way up? <laughs> Me and, uh, me and Ray were talking about this earlier, about basically figuring out what is the best way to uh, kind of get into <laughs> three gun. So I did bring I did bring that little red guy the whole time, but he I jammed his ass in the bottom of my my uh, bag and he never he never came out once. So but thanks, Juice Paul. I appreciate it. Man, 154 day, shooters. The two or, uh, viewers. I really appreciate everybody that's watching. That's right. Yeah, trial by fire, baby. That's what I told Rick. I said, nothing like going straight into. I tell you what, this much, this much I can tell you. Today at day two was a lot more comfortable. The wind was a little less. Well, it was quite a bit less. But it just seemed I was a lot more calm. It was like, you know, I had done it already. There is no match that Rick cannot go to in the PRS format that I think he wouldn't be prepared for now or at least have a better understanding of yeah. I mean, just the gains that he made from yesterday to today, he said his confidence level was better, he knew what to expect, and understood that time crunch. I just knew I had the dang mags that were gonna, they were gonna, yeah. hurt, they were gonna hurt me every time. As far as, three, uh, as far as 300 PRC, guys, you're not gonna see big calibers for this. You gotta remember, everybody's shooting these little 22 cal and six millimeter bullets, and you know, six these are them. some dang good shooters. You guys, you gotta realize, I mean, so some of these pro guys, I mean, these little tiny, tiny targets, you're talking eight, nine, a thousand, eleven, twelve, thirteen hundred yards, and they're making first round hits, they're figuring everything out. Keith I think his name is incredible. Keith Baker or Keith Miller. He was he was in my squad and he's a well known shooter, but he actually shoots a six five Creedmoor. The most common caliber? It's uh, going to be six millimeter something, a GT, a Dasher, uh, a something Prancer. like that. It's going to be the most uh, Prancer, Dasher, <laughs> Vixen. It's going to be one of those. It was a baptism of fire. I don't know if anybody was shooting the Arc or not. Yeah, um, don't know if they were. I would, I would assume because one of the Hornady family was out there. Yeah. Yeah, one of the owners, I think Steve Hornady, he was out there. I mean, well run event. You know, they fed us lunch every day. You had to kind of grab it and go, but they brought it out to the stages. What was the highest magnification? Hey, Gabriel Simmons, I just touched on that uh, earlier, um, so I'm glad you brought it up again. I never went over, I, I never went over about 12 to 13 power for any stage period. You can't because you won't find anything. You won't find your targets. One of the things that was difficult well, was, which was nice is like say you had a double swinger so you got like a, a six inch and a ten inch or whatever they're whatever they put like a color square you know it could be pink orange whatever it is but it, you kind of know which targets are yours they group them because there's a ton of targets on the mountain and stage eight might be shooting these ones and you're shooting across over to these you know these yeah ones. You're, you're having crossfire between the stages yeah. and it's it's making sure that you know which one it's not a hunt and seek it is very well defined on where your targets are at before you ever start engaging them. I think the guys that shot today on those, like the lake one and the yeah. long range one, they had a, a way better opportunity yeah. than we did. Uh, conservative sniper hunter, I don't know if Rick remembers what his squad member was getting on the Sixth Creed more. Like I said, I know I'm running 30, about 3,050 feet per second. He, he was. His bullet, actually, he runs a very slow bullet, um, and he runs, uh, I said, which one are you shooting, the 147s? And he said 150-somethings. I don't know what, I don't know what they are. 
Uh, how did Rick like the primary arm scope? I thought it was nice. Uh, it, I mean, it worked. It did its job. The only problem is, is well, I kind of did my job, but my damn mags. So you guys know I've had that scope for about seven months now. It's been on at least 15 different rifles yeah, and least. shot this Hornady event. Yeah. So when I do a review on it, like I said, I'm not pushing it. I'm just saying it's a good bang for the buck because it, MSRP's for $1,500 and it's put up with it's got all a, of this testing. Uh, the reticle's good. Yeah, I mean, I wanted to proof it out before I said, hey, this is a good scope. And then all of a sudden, you know, people have issues with it. It beats a lot of, well, not a lot, but quite a few of the, the bigger ones. Yeah, price, conservative sniper hunter, I am running it hot. That's okay. Um, I don't see any disadvantage of getting the accuracy, and believe it or not, my wind holds are a lot less than the other guys out there because when I got out there on the first stage, I actually listened. Cheating. It's not cheating. You can go 3,200 feet per second. <laughs> but uh, these Let's guys were like, yeah, you need, to, uh, you need to hold about four tenths. I was like, man, I'm thinking of two tenths. Well, I let them get into my head, and I tried it on one of the stages, and I was like, that was way too much. They were like, dude, we didn't know you were running those kind of speeds. Um, you know, the disadvantage is shorter barrel life. That barrel is probably going to be eat up in less than a thousand rounds, but I'll just spin up another one. <laughs> it's easy enough. Uh, burgers or A-tips? Burgers, by far, are probably one of the most popular bullets out there. I know Hornady sponsored the match. There were some people shooting A-tips, but burgers were very popular. Oh, so you know what you want to know who is popular? This guy. Are you X-ray? Oh, Okay, so if you're watching and you came up to me and talked to me at the match, I really do appreciate it. It was, and, and it was really kind say, of crazy. Hey, are you? Is your six covered? No, I'm just kidding. It was, it, was so, it was actually pretty cool going to an event like this. And a lot of these guys, were, I'd pull up and they're like, you're x ray I'm like, hey, man, I appreciate it. You know, but, I mean, it's a small channel, but a lot of it has to do with precision rifle shooting. And so a big shout out to you guys that came up and took the time to say hey to me, and I do appreciate it. I really do. We got to hang out with a couple guys at the hotel. I can't remember. One was, wasn't Steve. I can't remember. We hung out with them, and they're like, you, you, are, you guys are those X-ring guys. He said, you're those X-ring guys. I'm like, no, that's my channel. He said, he said he's your six covered. Uh, what are the best reticles for comps? Horus, Christmas, or Simplified Tree, or Mildot? Uh, almost everyone is doing some type of drop reticle, okay? Whether it's, you know, the Primary Arms Athena or whether it's a Vortex Razor EBR series. And I will tell you, if you watch the video that I just put out, the reason I was able to get those second shot hits on those targets at a long, long ways is if I shot, I could see where that impact went, kind of mark it mentally in the reticle, and then the next one was dead on. I mean, there was no more thinking about it. So it's better than zeroing out on the stage because I have a reference. And, you know, I swear by that Tremor 3. I actually had one of the viewers come up to me at the match and say, I love that Tremor 3. I wish you'd do more videos on it. But for me, it really worked. Now, I will tell you, I only dialed two of the 20 stages. Almost every single thing I did was holdovers. That's how beneficial it was for me. And these guys were like, man, I can't believe you're, you're just holdovers. And, you know, for, for somebody that's never done PRS, I, I really, I enjoyed it. Yeah, but you're used to that. Yeah, I, I guess so. But it, for me, it makes it easy. It, it's really nice. There wasn't anything easy today. You know, conservative sniper hunter, I will probably do another PRS event. Uh, probably know probably about it. I will. But I will go in better prepared hooked. and have better equipment. No, not hooked. You know, and the <laughs> thing is, when I talk to Rick, we're supposed to be doing the competition dynamics in October, yesterday, he was like, you need to find another partner. I don't want to do this. And he pretty much told me he didn't want to do it. You need to find another partner. <laughs> and then today, you pretty much oh, did. yesterday, yeah. yeah yesterday, he was down in the dumps. You have no idea. I'm like, I can't hit shit. No, I'm not. My undies, I got shorts on. What Come on, I ain't going to be in my undies. <laughs> Tika. Oh, I can show this one on. I can show this one on uh, live. No, That's okay. That's the Tika. Yeah, we're not in Evanston. We left Evanston and Woodruff, Utah, and drove to Salt Lake and booked tickets one way so that we wouldn't have to drive to Denver. Yeah. that that This trip cost us a lot more than we anticipated. It was, That's why we're staying in this nasty-ass hotel. There's, there's actually 
chalk marks of dead bodies that this, previously yeah. no I'm just uh gabriel you know the trimmer three has its purpose i don't know if it's prs because a lot of the wind dots and all that are really large that would have been uh, a good question it, to ask it definitely like. has its purpose for what, other applications but i do like the, I, I do like the trimmer three can you share what's the mission here uh no mission we were just talking and answering questions about the two-day Hornady PRC challenge we just we just participated in. Uh, the rifle weights being 15 plus pound. 15 is a light gun. Yeah, these almost everybody was running 20 plus pound guns. Look, I don't know what contour, these aren't hunting rifles. The contour of the barrels are, but it's like one inch stock. I mean, it's just all the way down. Okay, I used the H59 for a while. This is a question from Juice Paul. Um, I like the Trimmer 3. I like the H59. I like what the Trimmer 3 adds to the H59, if that makes sense. It does make it a little more busy, though. It's the meth hotel. It really is. Oh, that's for the wind calls, right? On the... Who farted in the car the most? We're tied on that one. No, no. A not. place like that. Are uh, your guns yeah. safe? Yes, because the guns are with us right here. Yeah. And they're and aimed at the door. That's where we're going to And I don't go anywhere without a firearm anyway. So <laughs> there's nothing crawling on the wall behind me, but there is a moth that's been on the door since we got here on the uh, broken door jam there. It is a meth hotel. I, I want to show them the stupid. Now, we checked the bed first. I think I'm going to sleep in my clothes tonight. But... Stupid light switch that's not even in the bathroom. Oh, it's, it's so bad, guys. I'm not even going to give you a tour of the hotel. It's, it's bad. Why? Who gives a rat's ass? Show them that freaking concoction in the shower. Holy <laughs> shit. You know what? I'm going to show them. This is where I come in. Don't. Don't. What? Okay. Yeah, so you want to see the worst room in history. I haven't, <laughs> right. I haven't stayed in a room like this since I was... Okay, so here's the bathroom, but we'll get to that. In order to turn... Where am I? In order to turn the bathroom light on... You're not allowed to be in the bathroom to turn on. Oh, no, right here. Well, what's this? Oh, yeah. And then there's this thing, which is obviously a bottle opener. I've never been to a hotel with one of those. Check this contraption out. Look at this thing. Hold on with electrical tape. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is a race tape right here. This is electrical tape holding this on. So, you know, there's three wraps. <laughs> it's a, it's a. It's awesome. You know what? We got showers out of it, so. You got a high speed TV over here. And. Oh, you gotta show them the door jam. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You gotta see this shit. All right, so, but, okay, don't mind the bullet holes. <laughs> so, this door's been busted once, twice. Here's another one right here couple up there yeah so and this moss been here ever since we got here <laughs> what are these guys saying i can't read it oh, it's, it's crazy <laughs> but, we're not responsible for it's in the comment section <laughs> <laughs> what I was gonna show. yeah who knows so hopefully we make it out of utah Let's see if i can do this without breaking anything we are in uh, we're right here in salt lake at the uh, international airport yeah we're like nine minutes away or Rick something. is having technical difficulties. He's not getting the bottom hooked in. I can't because your glasses, you know, that thing you added? Was that a microwave in the toilet? You know, well, yeah, you got to, I mean, when you want to heat up some Hot Pockets or something, there's your microwave. And of course, you got to have Ray's junk food. And... He's freezing his Diet Coke, which is a smart move. More Diet Coke, pure leaf sweet tea. <laughs> yeah, we checked the bed for bugs. <laughs> if you guys see anything, make the sure beds. you tell me. All right, let me put you back on here. All right, someone I think came in late. Uh, I shoot a six millimeter Creedmoor and Rick shoots a six five Creedmoor. Yeah. yeah, Salt Lake City. Is yeah. that one of them hooker hotels? Uh, yeah, probably. I, it probably is. Who probably knows? is. Let's see if I can plug this back in. Hold on one second, everybody. There we go. What about the stains? Hey, like I said, we're, we're trying to bring it to you guys real. This is real. Do what you got to do. 
No, no, that, the pistols don't stay under the pillows. Everything is out on top, ready to go. So if somebody <laughs> comes through that door, they're getting actually at the door. We got a string. Pummeled. We got a string attached to it, so they try to open the door. Yes, I did make top fifty percent in the match. Yeah, you did. did. You did great. You did well, my friend. <laughs> if you put a black light on here to look for bodily fluids, oh god, <laughs> I'm scared too. I'm scared too. Yeah, no, we're not proud of staying here, but it fit the budget. I don't know if you guys saw it when he showed you the door, but uh, believe it or not, the room rate is two hundred and nine dollars for this dump. We didn't pay that. We didn't pay that though. No. But anyway. Um, LRAs, I saw a lot of levels. I saw a lot of levels on the rifles. That was important. Setup is important. Making sure you're getting everything in position. Take that extra second dope card to make everything's right. You have to have a dope card holder, yeah. okay? You Guys, if you're just getting started and you, you want to run an armband, that's fine, but don't buy one. That's not what you're going to end up needing. And the problem is going to be when you're engaging targets, you're going to have to change your focus and look back down here. You want something out here uh, we met, uh, his name is uh, Brady uh, Brady Lamb, and he owns Blam Precision. Yep. He makes a 3D printed uh, data card holder. They are invaluable. You're going to need one of those. What's a dope card holder? Uh, it's a little, basically it's a hotel card, but all white, where you can dry, you know, you can use it. It's like a dry erase board, but you want to use permanent markers. Okay, so so here, here's a good example. Okay, so guys, this is stage five. This is Rick's book here. So if you look over there, you're going to see you've got the deer at 1,010, the elk at, you know, 1,100 and so. Off to the side is where you're going to put your dope or your data on previous engagement for your holds. Well, you're not going to have this book with you while you're shooting. There's no time for that. So what you do is you transfer this information along with your wind onto a little card that looks like a hotel room key card, but it's just solid white. Solid white. And you use a marker on that and you stick it on there with Velcro and it's out here. So when you're looking through the scope, all you've got to do is glance left and you'll either know what to dial or what to hold. A dope card holder is a must. Got to have that. What's a must too is a Kestrel. I don't think you could run this without a Kestrel. Yeah, if you don't have a Kestrel and trying to do this no off way. an app on your phone, you're, you're going to be in trouble. Uh, you, there's a little arm that they make that attaches to it, and then you actually just Velcro the uh, dope card on there. Yeah, Jerry Parker said, did anyone use a semi-automatic? Yes, actually, I know uh, one of the AMU guys, uh, uh, Peterson, and he. I talked to him. He actually won first place in that. There was three ga gas gunners. But there was three total gas gunners. They did okay. They didn't finish great because you're just going to lack that precision. I mean, yeah, you can engage targets faster, but... No, I mean, they didn't fare you that don't, well. You don't really need faster if everything's running smooth. I guess on some of the stages would be... I asked Rick what card holder he was running before the match. I was running a HUD before the match. And before that, I wasn't really running a card holder. What card holder do you have now? you have the Hawk Hill? No. No, I had to use your armband one. Oh, okay, so I loaned him an Armageddon yeah. gear armband with cards on it, the clear data cards. Yeah. And it's not fact, as good as the my HUD. Give me just a second, I'll the, show you some stuff. Hold the on. The problem with the HUD, because I originally had gotten the HUD, and if you guys aren't familiar with that, it's a heads-up display that that Bluetooth for your Kestrel and gives you your data. The problem is, is if if you it. I, don't, I didn't have time to make it where I could add the targets for each stage because, one, I'm not uh, familiar enough with the product, and two, there's just not really enough time. All right, guys, I wish there was more light in here, but I keep this in my pack at all times. Now, this is always going to have usually my Kestrel in it, and this was the armband that I loaned Rick, and this goes around your arm. This is all Velcro, and then you have clear data cards here. I'll show you what a filled out one looks There's like. Oh. I also have Ear Pro in here. Did you and then here is my matchbook. Okay. Now, what I'll do, I'm going to show you this. This has my pins in it. These are the markers for these cards. 
So once I get the data, what I will do is I will pull the card out and let me show you what these look like. Yeah, these are, Joe's Paul, they are pretty expensive. To... These are from the match. This is my data from the match. And as I go from stage to stage, if I can reuse a card, what I'll do is I'll flip it over. Like, uh, let's see if I have one. Like if, I, if I'm using this side of the card, instead of possibly getting the wrong information, <laughs> I'll use a clear side. So I'll have target shapes, identifications in there with my wind holds. Same thing here. Swirling so, winds. Do we? The first day we we experienced a lot of uplift. Yeah, uplift. There was a lot of times where the wind would actually bring your bullet higher, so you had to dial down. And uh, there's some more cards. And then what you do on the back of these is you just put Velcro on them, and so it just goes straight on the a lot of the on the holder. And and this is something that Ray doesn't like to do, but I I noticed a lot of people were running painters tape on here, like four or five sheets. You know where it's thick and then after that one they would just pull it off and then put it in the trash can but you never can find trash cans so you end up having trash and generate there's trash, one in every so. tent some of them <laughs> i don't like anything with trash i don't like trash uh jost paul yeah he says they're they're he, he googled them they're expensive 100 bucks yeah and then which got, ones i do uh, it didn't say Rick's great. He is the squirrel on the over the hedge. <laughs> See, sounds expensive. Everything in PRS is expensive. Yeah, it is expensive. I don't think you're gonna get into that game cheap. Uh, I really don't. The rifleman ro Rolodex. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. much. Pretty much. Back uh, backward headwind, uplift, right to left wind. There was everything. Ramsey Country it depended. You basically were on this big mountaintop, and then there was a valley, and then there was targets. But as you went around, the way the stages were set up, actually show them the first page of this. Keep going, it'll show the a layout. Yeah, right there. Yeah, so that's the layout of the entire course that was in the valley. See how see how you're basically on the top, and you're you're working your way around. Yeah, so you're gonna get winds at both directions, no matter what. Yeah, so sometimes you're on this side of the valley shooting, and then the other times you're on the other. I don't remember seeing write this stuff down while shooting. There's a, I haven't put it out yet. There's a video, you'll see me going from stage to stage and I'm using this thing, so then I'll dial it in where he was just basically had, he had it. There was, you could see a lot of difference in speed. And, okay, and he, yeah. was, he was hitting targets a lot better than I was. All right, well, we, got, we have a captive audience, so I'll go ahead and show you guys what I do. I'm oh, not saying oh, it's the a right kill, way. 120, yeah. I'm not saying it's the right way, but it is my way. The red neck pepper. What's up, Tony? Okay, so here, here you go, guys. This right here is raw data on what my holes should be, okay? Now, I did a video on this. So basically, first target, it's going to be up half a mil. Second target was eight tenths. Third was 1.2, fourth was one six, and then two. What I do then is I subtract <coughs> two, or a half a mil, from the two at the bottom. That's gonna zero out here off to the side. So what that means is I go ahead and dial in half a mil. So now that first target that I engage, I just hold them dead center. All I do is I subtract that half mil away from each one of these numbers because it's zeroed out. This way I have shorter area to work in in the reticle. Instead of having to go all the way down to two mils, I'm working in a shorter range. Now, that's not bad when you're doing this. When you're doing like seven mils, it does make a huge difference. James, no, James asks, I know I've never tried the QB armband. Conservative sniper. Or a quarterback armband. Oh, quarterback. Uh, why didn't I use the Kestrel? I'm not uh, trying to load the data into there so it'll show up on my HUD with targets. What the hell is that noise? Probably some crack convention going on. Um, it takes too much time. I didn't have enough time. But there was a... I would say... Dial in. Listen, don't, look, what the hell is that noise? I think there's sound a like somebody daycare. being murdered next door. Yeah. Well, hopefully they finish the job soon <laughs> so we don't have to hear that shit. I don't know if y'all can hear that. We've got screaming going on next door. Uh, there was actually a great question by DW... I don't remember seeing you write this stuff down. So when you're walking up to the next stage, you get to the next stage, and hopefully you're there early, you're basically getting your Kestrel, your environmentals, you're writing all that down. That's a child crying. Um, 
and then basically having it ready before you go. So that's kind of how that is. Here. Yeah, you have to really rush to you get all your data out. before it's your time to go. We're probably waking them up. It's a, no, they got the TV blaring over there. It's almost 11. All right, Lopez, it is really late, uh, but like I said, I wanted to do it. We've got 153 viewers on it. I really appreciate it, guys. Uh, do you get different Mirage off darker surfaces than you did lighter color surfaces? I, I didn't notice that. I didn't either. What's up, Andrew? Meth is a hell of a drug. T9 Wolf A1. Is there any guy walking around with air pressure bolt gun? Air pressure bolt gun? Oh, he's talking about like uh, that movie. What the I don't know. What are you talking about? Uh, James Sparks, yeah, we did have a little bit of trouble with the dust, uh, especially in Rick's mags, but apparently it's a known issue, but it must be a dollar night. <laughs> anyway, uh, I just wanted to do a live chat. I don't do them that often. I appreciate all of you, each and every 155 of you that are on here now watching. And Get over said, to Is Your Six Covered and subscribe, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages. Uh, Juice Paul, you could do it with a 10-power scope. Uh, but there are times you might want a little bit more, and plus if you shoot a different style match, you might want it if you're wanting to. I mean, you, you don't need big power. I've never used the range in that 7 to 35 more than 20, I think, even when I'm trying to zero or anything like that. But we are going to go ahead and shut it down. I appreciate every one of you that's joined in, and hopefully we'll get you some videos up, and I do have some videos of... Um, of uh, the guys over at Straight Jacket Armory. That'll be a pretty cool video for you guys to see. And I hope everyone has a great evening. Yeah, we'll try to care. stay alive. Stay safe. Yeah. And we will talk to you guys soon. I think I got 60 rounds. And gals, yeah. have a good one. See you.